So today, we have got something special for you. We have created this vertical image carousel. It's designed to scroll infinitely, and it's really gonna help you stand out as there isn't a widget in Elementor that can do this. So in this video, I'll show you how I built this from scratch, and you can find all of the CSS code as well as the images in the description below. But if you don't wanna watch the full tutorial and you just wanna get this hero section as a ready to use template, you can actually get it from our template shop over here. And as a bonus, you're also gonna get the entire landing page included with this cool slider over here. So after downloading the zip file, you're gonna get these two folders over here and one contains the vertical image um, of the carousel and the other one contains the entire template. So I'm only going to import the first section. So you're going to simply open the folder and then we're going to upload and then insert the JSON file into Elementor. So this is our JSON file and then insert it in. And as you can see, it works immediately. Okay, but if you don't want to use this template, you can build it from scratch. So I will now delete the imported template and then I'm going to show you how to build this step by step. And you're also going to need to activate Flexbox container in order for this to actually work. So you can do that by um, going to your settings and then ensuring that this is active over here. So I'm going to start by adding in a container and I'm going to give it four columns. On the container, I want you to change this to full width and give it a minimum height of 500 pixels. We're also going to center align the content so that your structure now looks like this. Now the first three containers, this we'll use for our image carousel and we'll actually place our images in here. And the fourth one, this is going to be used for our content. So we're going to make this narrower for our images to go in. So I'm going to change the percent on this to 15%, sorry, 15%. And I'm going to give it a padding of 15 as well. So this is going to make sure that the images just like aren't right on top of each other. I want you to copy this and then paste it over to the first three blocks. This last container over here, this is going to span the rest of our content so we can make this 55%. Okay, so once we have that, we can now add in a background color. And I prefer to use a darker background when we have images on top of it because I always just find that the images just really pop. So once we've got this set up, you can now go onto the first container and then go to the website and then you can get the link to this in the description below. Okay, scroll down to step one and copy this code. Go ahead and go to advanced custom CSS and then you're just going to paste it in. There are two really important things in this code. The first one is the image class and the second one is the column ID. So we'll start with the column ID and on the same container, go to layout and add in a CSS ID here and just make sure that you remove the pound key. And you can now see that our column has changed. Next, we're going to add in our first image and drag it in. And you can get a link to all of these images from this website. And if you just scroll down, you can see the download to all of the images. Now on the image resolution, I want you to change this to custom and this is just going to help us control the sizing of the images. So we're going to make it 170 by 250. Go ahead and add a border radius so that our edges are curved and we'll make that 15 and give it a box shadow of about 5. That'll do. Once you've done that, you can then go to advanced and we're now going to add in the CSS class. Sorry, so I have to go back to the container where I added my code, go to the custom CSS and just grab that class there. Go back to your image and you can place the class in over here. Make sure you remove the dot and then you can see that the animation is now scrolling upwards. So that's looking great. Let's go ahead and copy this image and paste it in and you can just paste this over four times so that you have four images in total. 
Something to note on the images, you're going to notice that in the builder, it does this like weird overlap of the images and some jumping and spacing. Just so you know, this is only visible in the builder and it won't look like this on the live site. On the live site, it's going to look just perfect. So we're now ready to add in step two's code. So make sure that you copy this code and you don't just duplicate your columns because the code is different and then you won't get the intended result. And on the second container, you're going to do exactly as before. Add your custom CSS in, copy the ID, then go to layout and paste it in by the CSS ID. Always remove that pound key. Okay, you can then copy a image from over here and then just paste it into this column. Go to advanced and you need to change out the image class to match the column. So it's now image two. And we now have the reverse animation, which looks great. One quick thing before we continue, it doesn't look great the way the image is just cutting off at the edge of the screen. It will look a lot nicer if there's some space. So I'm gonna to go to the container, go to advanced, and then just add in a padding of 19 on the top. And then it kind of like fades in like that, which looks better. Let's copy this and paste it in. You can have four images as before. Okay, now go onto this container over here, and we're just gonna change a couple of settings. So firstly, I'm gonna add in a minimum height of 800, and I'm also gonna to go to advanced and just add in an overflow of hidden. Okay, I'm gonna do the same on the second container. Give it a minimum height of 800 and add in an overflow of hidden. Okay, so we're now ready to go over to the third column. Go in and grab the code and copy it. Go to advanced and paste it in. You know exactly what to do from here. Copy the image, paste it in, go to advanced and update the class. Okay, so now we've got a column going upwards, downwards, and up again. So we'll copy these images, paste it in. Okay, don't forget to click onto the container, and then also just give it a minimum height of 800, and you can change the overflow to hidden as well. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make it responsive. At the moment, it won't work on mobile, so we're going to fix that in just a moment. But before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the rest of my hero content. So this is going to be really quick. We're going to add in a heading over here, and then I'm going to go to style, and I'm going to just change the typography over to 65 pixels. And... We're also going to add in some custom CSS. So I'll go to advanced and then paste it in here. And you can get the CSS code from the link in the description of this video. You'll notice that nothing has actually changed when I added in the code. But if you go to style and just remove the color so make it completely transparent, you can now see the gradient effect. Next, all we're going to do is add in some text. And we'll also add in a button on this container over here just go to advanced and then you can add in a left padding of say 50 pixels and that looks a bit better as we're not squashing it up against the carousel okay so there's our carousel it's working nicely we can take a look at it on the front end so the next thing that we need to do is make sure that this looks good on mobile and responsive devices and then click on responsive mode and you can switch to mobile. And as you can see, this really doesn't look right at all. We'll start by making this a little bit smaller, um, just so that it fits into the container. That should be fine. And we're also just going to remove the padding on the left here and then just change it to 30 pixels and we'll make that go all the way around. Finally, you can just center this content all of these elements can be centered and that'll look better. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and fix this carousel. And I'm going to click on this code over here and copy it. And then go to settings and on the page settings, we'll apply this code here. So it applies to everything. And you can now see that this has already switched everything a bit. Now, if you click on the main container, 
you need to wrap this. And finally, we're going to change each of these containers to be 33 pixels so that they can fit onto one row. So we'll change this over to percentage, make this 33, and we'll change this one, 33, as well as this one. Okay, great. If you're not seeing the correct thing here, you can actually just update it and then go in and out of Elementor and you can now see that our carousel is looking correct. Don't worry about these spacings. Remember, it doesn't look right in the builder, but it does look right on the front end. Okay, so let's scroll down. We don't want this being our first thing that we see. It doesn't look great over there. So we are going to switch these containers around. So I'll click on this container and then I'm going to go to advanced and I'm just going to change the order and we'll make this one um, appear first. Then we'll go to this container, change the order and we'll make this one second, third and the fourth. Okay, great. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to show you how to create this slider that goes horizontally. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.